and then we're live. So when is with a Z.org. Welcome to the Blaze Baba Study. I'm welcoming now um, the podcast listeners, amen, um, that's available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, um, man, so many, um, YouTube, uh, we have them on Spreaker, Stitcher app, amen, TuneIn app, of course, Apple Podcasts, and all the nine yards, amen. God bless you, Brother Benny. I see you there. God bless you. God bless everyone. Uh, Jose, God bless you. Nene, God bless you, brother. Amen, amen. So tonight, we're going to talk about what happened after the resurrection. It ain't over, amen. It was never over. Jesus was telling the disciples that so many times. He was saying it all the time, and they weren't getting it, amen. I guess I would not got it either, amen, to tell you the truth, because it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing to realize that Jesus was talking about, listen, I'm going to go away, but I'm coming right back. He said, three days later, I will rebuild my temple. Amen. And he meant his physical body. Just let's put it like this. If Jesus would have said it like this, listen, I'm going to come back spiritually. I'm going to die and three days later come back spiritually. You know what? You can't test that. But he didn't come back spiritually. He came back bodily. Amen. Now, doesn't it? That's a problem. To all the naysayers. That's a problem to all the people who didn't believe what he was saying. That's a big problem because he didn't come back spiritually. If he would have came back spiritually, listen, there's no way to disprove that. But he came back bodily. Amen. And because he came back bodily, look what happens. Let me get my notes ready. Apologize. I was on a a men's um, ministry, third day worship center, men's ministry. And we were on there. Amen. And we were doing a four uh, man um, type leading a discussion. Amen. It was awesome. It was powerful. Amen. We had a lot of tech issues, but we got through it. Amen. Um, God reminded me of something literally on the spot about how to set something up because God does speak to us that way as well. Amen. So let's see if I could get my notes back up here. Um, early this morning, if you're with me for the morning devotional, I try to stay faithful to that. I try to do a morning devotional Monday through Friday. Amen. Sometimes it doesn't happen because I oversleep. Sometimes, you know, yeah, basically that's what happens when I don't have it in the morning. It's because I overslept. Forgive me. Amen. But I'm just glad to have this at night as well. I like to do it 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the morning devotional and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Bible study. Amen. Because I think that keeps me in line. It gives me enough time in between. Amen. To reset, to get rest, to spend time with family, to do what I got to do outside of these four walls of my house and this quarantine. I don't know about you. But this quarantine is um, driving me a little bonkers. <laughs> I'm just being honest because, man, this thing is, you know, um, yeah. Let's just put resurrection. It should come up here. Um, and we will see where it happens. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I get my notes back up, ladies and gentlemen. And let's see. Resurrection. What happened after the resurrection? That's the question. Very important because, listen, if nothing happened after the resurrection, then this is all, you know, nothing. It has no bearing in anything. Amen? But since it does, and while we're on the topic, amen, God knows exactly what he did. He knows what he said he was going to do, and he proved it. By what? By his bodily resurrection. Okay? Part one, I gave you that earlier this morning. Amen. So let me do a quick review for all the per- listeners and all the watchers right now and all the viewers right now that are um, don't know what happened after the crucifixion and the resurrection. Amen. Listen, if Friday never happened, Sunday would have not made, mattered. It would have not made sense. If Jesus would have not died, then the resurrection wouldn't make sense, if you get what I'm saying. This is what happened. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through it. There's a lot more that happened, but I'm going to just go through it real quickly. Amen. So um, the first thing that happened, Christ rises from the dead very early Sunday morning. Some people say it was Monday morning. Amen. Um, Hey, if it was Monday, Sunday, Saturday, the point is that early in the morning, he rose. After three days being dead, he rose again from being dead because he's not, he's alive. Amen. Let me take a sip of this. Christ rises from the dead very early Sunday morning. How did it happen? According to Matthew in chapter 28, verses 2 to 4, paraphrasing, he said, A violent earthquake and an angel rolling away the stone that was in front of the tomb. The guards are traumatized. There was guards in front of this tomb. 
first of all, we would call them armed guards, guards, but they were guards in front of there. Their assignment was to watch and make sure nothing and no one tampered with Jesus' body in that tomb. What happens? Angels show up. They push the rock to the side. The guards are traumatized because they have seen this angel and they freeze. Uh, and Matthew was talking about the angel of God. Amen. And the other gospels are talking about angels that there were two or more. One, of, I know there was plural angels in there in another gospel. Some people call these contradictions. I call them viewpoints. Amen. And I gave this analogy earlier, earlier in this morning. If you're at any sporting event, depending, let's take baseball. If you're on the the first base side or the third base side, amen? Listen, so a hitter gets up, boom, he hits uh, to third base side, amen? Um, it was a long throw for the third base, um, right? The third base guy the on the offense to throw the first base. From the third base side, you're seated all the way back there. He says, man, he, he, he was out. He was out. And the guys that are sitting on the first base side, they could see it clearer. They said, man, he was safe by a mile. You see how the two, the same event, two different perspectives because you have two different viewpoints, you know, vantage points of where you see it. I believe that in the Gospels. It's not a contradiction. It's just that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all had tidbits of the resurrection. You know, real quick, you know that all the Gospels did not have um, the story about the birth of Jesus, right? How many Gospels did have the story of the birth of Jesus? Amen. That'll be your first quiz of the night. Amen. And I'll get I'll, I'll wait for the answer if you know it. Did all for let me phrase it like this: Did all the Gospels talk about the birth of Jesus Christ, or how many of the Gospels spoke about the birth of Jesus Christ? There's no contradictions in the Scriptures. Is that if a different person is writing the same event, there's going to be stuff um, that they might add or stuff they they might have missed. Amen. Like, it's more detailed when I read the Gospels. One saw it this way, another saw it that way. Sometimes it gives you more details. Amen? I know I've been at the same event with brothers and sisters in the Lord. We've been at the same event. We're there. And we come away saying, did you see that? I said, no, what are you talking about? Did you realize when this person did that? No, what are you talking about? And I was there at the same event. It's not a contradiction. It might be more information. Amen? Look into the Gospels for yourself. So that, that was the greatest event. Jesus rises from the dead early that Sunday morning. Number two, Mary Magdalene and another Mary, both Marys, right? They walked to the tomb because together they had planned to meet there. They wanted to uh, see, you know, the Jesus that they loved. Um, they saw that um, together they planned to meet there when they arrived they saw that the stone was rolled away. The guards are gone by now. See see how that works out? So in the first situation in Matthew, they said the, gods, the guards were froze. But by the time the, both Marys got there, the guards were gone. Amen. And you find that in John chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. She returns to find Peter and John and tells them that someone has moved the body of Jesus. Because normally thinking she's like wait a minute there's no way we saw this man die on the cross there's no way that he could have just got up not remembering that jesus told her i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me even if they die they shall not die they shall live jesus said do you believe this and he's still asking that question to me and to you do you believe this do you believe this man jesus rose from the dead i believe it amen I know there's a lot of people that have so-called evidence that he did not rise from the dead. But listen, I'm not that smart and I'm not that stupid. The easiest way to debunk Christianity, the easiest way to say that I'm wrong is to find the body of Jesus, which, by the way, every Easter, every year, when you're in the supermarket, you're going to pass a magazine, always buy, buy, you know, the candies. You know, these are the impulse items that they put right next to the cashier. You always see these magazines. Every Easter season, you see that they found his bones, they found the grave. Every time. It's like clockwork. But guess what? Where? Show me the body. What? How come these magazines and these reporters, archaeologists, so-called scientists, archaeologists, and all these people, they, every year they say they find the body, but they never show you it. And then you see an old documentary from years and years ago saying, oh, we've been saw this. 
and this whole thing, um, you know, we saw the body, we got the body, it's hidden somewhere. Yeah, okay. Never found the body of Jesus. If you found the body of Jesus, then I won't be talking right now because I'll be, there's no Christianity, none left, none whatsoever. Amen. Number three, another group of women were scheduled to meet the two Marys at the tomb. So, you know, at that time, the reason why this is so powerful at that time, women really didn't have a voice in that time in that culture. So isn't it surprising that Jesus shows himself to women before he shows himself to men as the resurrected Jesus? Because in this occasion, they acquired spices to complete the burial process, which had been hurried. They are concerned about finding some men to help roll away the stone. Since it was large and needed to be rolled against gravity, to their surprise, these women see two angels. And there's another version of what was seen there. The women are scared to death and leave. Seeing angels has this effect. Mark chapter 16, verses 2 and 8. Luke 24, verses 1 to 8. And Matthew record this at the same time. Amen. Showing himself to women. Amen. And I guess we should read that account. Mark 16, 2 and 8. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And when they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? Good question, right? Verse 4, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Verse 7, But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Think about it, man. They were looking for the body of Jesus and they find the tomb empty and an angel talking to them. And Jesus gave the angel instructions for them to go tell the other disciples. Women were told about the resurrection before men. And at that time, that was unheard of. Amen. Jesus is going against the culture, going against the norm. Amen. Because he's God and he's supernatural. He's not natural. Amen. Luke 24 verses 1 and 8. On the first day of the week. Very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Um, Is this the right? uh, Yeah. Okay. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Verse 4. While they were wondering about this, or wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Now there's two angels, right? In In their fright, The woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? That's a good question. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you. I'm telling you, Jesus told them this already, but they didn't get it. I would have not got it either. Maybe you would not got it either while Jesus was saying and talking about his resurrection way before it happened. While he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Then they were like, that's right. He said that. He told us that. How many times does that happen to me when I'm looking through the word of God and I'm like, God, you told me this. Forgive me for not remembering, but this is your word. Amen. We need to realize when God is speaking. And in Matthew 28 verses 5 and to 8, the angel said to the woman, now there's one angel, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified again, reminding these people at the tomb that, yeah, Jesus was crucified. You're at the right tomb. It's not the wrong tomb. It's a theory that says that they all went to the wrong tomb. The Jews went to the wrong tomb. The guards were at the wrong tomb. The disciples went to the wrong tomb. That's why they never found his body. But the angel is saying, no, this is the right tomb. You're looking for the Jesus that was crucified. You're in the right spot, but he is not here. He has risen, just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell 
Jesus' disciples. Amen? It's, it's, it's incredible, this story. That's why it's so hard for people to believe. Listen, I didn't believe in this either. Before Jesus had to come into my life and change me. Like, if he never changed my life, amen, if he never transformed my mind, my heart, I would not believe this story. This story is way too, like, sci-fi for me, way too over the top before, amen. It was too spiritual for me at that time. I didn't have the spirit of God in me, so I could not understand spiritual matters. I couldn't understand spiritual things. Now that I have spirit of God in me, Holy Spirit of God in me, when I read the scriptures, I'm, the spirit of God testifies that this is true. Amen. This happened. Eyewitnesses and everything. Peter and John arrived after being summoned by Mary Magdalene. And I showed you that in the clip when I opened up. Amen. That there, there was a scene of them rushing back to the tomb to verify what the Marys were saying, to verify what, you know, if this was really true. I would have ran back to the tomb. I had to see that with my own eyes. Then you have the disciple Thomas, doubting Thomas. Amen. He still didn't believe. He said, Jesus could have to appear to me and I'm going to have to feel his wounds. I'm going to have to feel the, the scars in his hand and the nail through his wrist and through his hand or through his wrist, however you want to call the hand. Amen. And he has to see, feel the scar and the slice on the side and all that. He said, until that happens, I'm not going to believe. And Jesus did that too. Amen. He showed Thomas Boom. And then when he showed Thomas that, then Thomas did what? Fell on his feet and fell on his knees and worshipped Jesus as being God. Amen. The disciple Thomas did that. Amen. Be blessed and be saved. Baby crying, teething. Real, y'all. God bless you. Amen. Take care of your mommy. Do your mommy duties, sister. God bless you. And you can watch this later on when you have time. God bless you and the baby. Thanks for coming through, Sister Jill. So, apparently... John looks into the tomb, but Peter goes inside. Amen. And John is like, I'm, I'm not going in there. But Peter, Apostle Peter, the one that was the stubborn one, the one that chopped off the ear, the one who denied Jesus three times. Yeah, I'm going in, he said. He was that type of person. Now, I'm going in and see this for myself. He runs into the tomb. Amen. All he finds are the burial clothes. There they go, the evidence. And they, you know, scripture and theologians and people who study this out say that they were folded neatly. The garments of Jesus were folded neatly. What do you do? Or what should we do when we get out of bed? We should make the bed, right? And what do we do with our, you know, the garments? We should fold them neatly. Why? Because when we return, amen, they will be ready for use. Jesus folded his garments neatly, signifying that he is to return. Amen. He's coming back. Uh, Peter goes inside, he finds all the burial clothes, they return confused, but Mary Magdalene apparently stays at the tomb to grieve that someone has removed Jesus' body. She's still thinking, listen, who took the body out of it? That's disrespectful. Not realizing that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. And no one would, I don't think, if, you, if you're honest, amen, be honest. I don't think nobody thought this was going to happen. I didn't think the disciples really believed it. I, don't, I definitely didn't think the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees really believed that he was going to come back. Amen. I think they understood what Jesus was saying more than the disciples when he said before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I am. The, you know, before Moses and all that, he says, I am. And they knew he was saying that he was God. And when he was talking, they, I think they missed it when he said three days later, I will rebuild the temple because they asked Jesus, wait a minute. It took us more. It's going to take you more than three years to rebuild any temple. It took us years and years to rebuild this temple. They didn't realize that the temple he was talking about was his own body, the temple. Amen. That he was coming back after three days. People were missing it. Jesus was talking kingdom. He was talking supernatural and people were trying to naturalize his supernatural way of speaking. That's why they missed it. I would have missed it too if I was there. <clears throat> Amen. Jesus makes his first appearance to Mary Magdalene after Peter and John have left. At first, she supposes him to be the gardener, but he, but she is then overjoyed to realize that it is the Lord. John chapter 20, verses 11 to 17. The Bible says, But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. That's real, real um, scriptural reading right there. If you look that up and study that out, that's powerful. They asked for her. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? <laughs> they have 
taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize him. She did not realize that it was Jesus. Verse 15, woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? This is Jesus asking her. Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Jesus not, has not ascended yet. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus says, look, I'm still doing my thing. I don't, don't really hold on to me because I have not returned. I have not ascended. He does that in the book of Acts later on after the resurrection. Amen. And this gets, this gets better and better as we go. Jesus then appears to these other women, Matthew 28, verses 9 and 10, where he had left before Peter and John had arrived. There, these are the two women who saw the angels. Jesus tells them to communicate that the disciples were to prepare to travel to Galilee. Jesus was saying, meet me at Galilee. We're going to meet again there at Galilee. Amen. The woman joined by Mary Magdalene report their meeting with Jesus to the disciples. And the disciples are probably like, no way, this cannot be. And of course, they come running over. Now, we realize that Jesus appears to Cleopas and his friend. Amen. This is on the afternoon of the first Easter Sunday as these two disciples were traveling toward Emmaus. Amen. So, Right away, Jesus shows himself, appears bodily, not supernaturally, spiritually, bodily resurrection. Amen. If he just rose spiritually, listen, this would have been easy and people would have called this a myth. People still call this myth. People still call this stories, wishful thinking, no evidence. They call it all kind of things. But he didn't come back in, the, in just spirit. He came back bodily. That's like me going in the grave, coming back three days later, and sitting here and doing another Blaze Bible study. You're going to be like, oh, I thought he... I thought he was gone. You come back bodily, then there's a there's a situation, there's an issue now. You have a problem. The problem is, amen, that Jesus didn't come back spiritually, he came back bodily. It's all through the scriptures. He appears. These two disciples make a report to the eleven apostles that evening. There was eleven out of the twelve, because why? Judas hung himself. He felt guilty for turning in Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. Amen. He turned he turned over Jesus. But Jesus knew he was going to betray him. So he was doing what he was meant to do. And the big question is, is Judas going to hell? I don't know. He was doing what he was prophesied to do. God bless you, Sister Rosa. Amen. How you doing? God bless you, Sister. Thank you for joining the blaze. It's almost done, though. We have um, seven more minutes to go. Amen. These two disciples make a report to the 11 apostles. You find that in the book of Mark 16, 13. Amen. And then he appeared to the 10 disciples all at one time. Amen. He was there hanging out with the disciples. Amen. He says, either while Cleopas and his friend were still there or afterward, the 11 apostles are discussing this claim during the evening at that same Easter day. They had the doors locked because they were fearful of people coming and finding them out. Remember, um, Peter denied Jesus three times because they said, weren't you with Jesus? He would deny them once. Weren't you with Jesus? You were one of them. And after the third time, he remembered what Jesus told them. You were going to deny me three times. The cockaroo crows. Coo -coo 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 -coo. The cockadoo crows. And he remembers and he goes away very saddened. But now they're all hiding because they thought that their Messiah, the one who said, you know, it was the Savior, was done with. And now they didn't want to be, you know, found out. They didn't, you know, they didn't want to tell them themselves. The 11 apostles are discussing this claim during the evening of the same Easter day. They had the doors locked, fearful that the Jews might plot against them and arrest them. Jesus appears to the 10 apostles. Thomas is not there at this point, but they presume he is a ghost. Listen, there's no such thing as ghosts. They thought he was a ghost. He encourages them to look at his hands, his feet, and his side because they saw what happened to him on the cross and those scars were still there. He insists that they touch them. 
and his feet and his side. He insists that they touched him, but this still does not convince the apostles that he really is risen. I don't know what other proof they would need at that point. Listen, they saw what happened to him on the cross, and here he is. Okay, I'm proving it touched me. They still thought he was a ghost. That's a little strange, right? He eats with them, right? And the reality of the resurrection registers with them. After you know, now he's eating with you. Now you're like, wait a minute, this is Jesus. They are overjoyed. Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit upon them. Ruach Elohim, Holy Spirit of God. He does it again. Breathes life into men that were full of fear. The disciples were full of fear. They were hiding out. So Ruach Elohim, the breath of life, breathes that fear out of them and breathes the faith, Holy Spirit God, into them. Amen. We need to inhale Ruach Elohim. Amen. And exhale the victory. Amen. As we continue to inhale Ruach Elohim, the breath of life, Jesus Christ, especially during this COVID-19 situation, which the COVID virus is attacking our respiratory system. Ruach Elohim is the name to speak out during this time. A week later on a Sunday, Jesus appears to the disciples with Thomas now there. Remember, Thomas was the doubting disciple. Amen. That's where we get the term doubting Thomas from. Doubting Thomas. He was there. He said, listen, I'm not going to believe until I could touch his wounds. Look what happens. Thomas becomes convinced. John chapter 20, verses 26 to 29. A week later, his disciples, that's seven days later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, so that means he went through the door. No door that you could close humanly uh, is able to stop God from going through any door. Amen. You can't place God in a box. You can't put him in a box. Amen. You know, we give prizes and gifts in a box. The wedding rings and, the, and when we get married, it comes in a box. Amen. You, uh, you know, wrap gifts in a box and eventually you go away in a box when you die. But God, you can't put God in no box and he is the gift. He is the reward. Amen. And even when he died, amen, they try to put him in a tomb box and that could not hold us. That could not hold Jesus, excuse me, could not hold our God. Amen. Death was defeated. When it comes to God, amen, and when he puts his Holy Spirit in us, Holy Spirit God, amen, we will not feel the sting of death. The scripture says death wherever is your sting, amen, for a Christian. Verse number, where are we? 27, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. That's a word for us today, tonight. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Amen. People going around saying, Jesus never claimed to be God. Okay. If he never claimed to be God, then why is he being worshipped by angels? Why is he being worshipped by men and women? Why is he being worshipped by even the demons would shudder at his at his sight? The demons would say, why, why are you coming? It's not our time yet. Knowing that he's the deity, knowing that he is God. Amen. You could deny him all you want. It's not going to do you any good. I did it for many years. Denied the Lord Jesus Christ as being God. Verse 29. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. There's another version of the scripture that said, more blessed are those who did not see me and yet they still believe. Amen. I'm I'm one of the more blessed. I never saw Jesus physically, bodily. Amen. But I believe so that I'll take that promise of being more blessed than even when the disciples saw him. They were with him. Why? Because they were dealing with doubt. They were dealing with fear. We still deal with doubt. We still deal with fear. But I trust and believe. He said, don't doubt. Believe. Trust me. Amen. Have faith. Trust in God because he did it all and proved it all. Amen. One more minute to go here on the blaze. A week later, about two weeks later after that, and that was 14 days, Jesus appears to the disciples while fishing and eats with them. Again, Jesus gives Peter a chance to undo his three denials by three affirmations of his love for Jesus. Powerful. John 21. You can see that in there. So There's several other appearances of Jesus mentioned in the scripture, including his appearance to a large crowd of over 500 people at one time. You see that in 1 Corinthians 15, 6. And, uh, 
people out there that deny that this ever happened and they try to disprove it. They said that all 500 people were hallucinating. Amen. Listen, there ain't no drug on the planet that me and you could take that I have us hallucinating all the same thing at the same time. 500 people, you're out of your mind. You have to have more faith in that theory than have faith in God. Amen. I don't have enough faith in that theory. But that's all I have. So much happened after the resurrection. Amen. Prepare yourself. Prepare your heart. Because when I come back next time, we're going to be talking about the ascension. Amen. When Jesus ascended to heaven to be at the right hand of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which is all him, as a matter of fact. He's the right hand of the Father, but he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. He's coming back soon. I just hope you're ready and you stay ready for the return of the coming Messiah, the King that's coming back. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. Peace.